This is an activity I do with my Algebra 2 and Pre-Calculus students when we're talking about parabolas. And uh, it takes advantage of the locus definition of a parabola, namely that a parabola is a set of all points between a line called the directrix and a point called the focus. So to get the set of points equidistant between this point, the focus, and this line, the directrix, I'm going to put a point on the line. I'm going to connect the focus to that line with a segment. And then I'm going to construct the midpoint. And then I'm going to construct the perpendicular bisector of that segment. So this perpendicular bisector is a set of points that are equidistant between the endpoints of the segment. And one end of the segment is a focus. And the other end of the segment is on the directrix. And as I move point D, I should get a parabola. Now it's a lot easier to see if I actually trace this perpendicular bisector. Here we go. Look at that. And you can get tired holding down your uh, left mouse button and dragging it back and forth. So I'm going to have the uh, point D selected. I'm going to go to Edit, Action Buttons, Animation, by directly along line number one at medium speed. That sounds good. Hit OK. Boom. And let the computer do the work for you. Why are my traces fading out? It's because when I go to Edit, Preferences, Color, I've checked fade traces over time. I can slow it down or speed up the rate of fading so you get a nice picture of the parabola. The thing I like about this is that my students can see how the position of the focus to the directrix can change the shape of the parabola, making it very uh, steep or very shallow. OK, so let's talk about ellipses. I'm going to create a new page here. And uh, to make an ellipse, I'm going to start with a circle. And when I do this with my students, the first thing I tell them is, if, is once you get the circle the size you want, hide point B, because they're liable to animate that thing somehow and make everything go kaflooey. OK, now I'm going to create a segment, one of whose endpoints is inside the circle, and the other endpoint is on the circle. OK, now the ellipse we're going to create is going to have one focus at point C and another focus at the center of the circle, point A. Once again, I'm going to construct the midpoint, hitting Control-M. Then I'm going to construct a perpendicular line. And we'll trace that perpendicular line again. And as we swing that around, voila, we get an ellipse. This is a great demonstration for eccentricity. The farther I pull apart my foci, or foci, depending on how you want to pronounce them, I get a more eccentric ellipse. And of course, this leads to the question from my students, well, what happens if the foci are on top of each other? And you get, no surprise, a circle. OK, so let's do some animation again. Let's select point D, go to Edit, Action Buttons, Animation. We'll go counterclockwise at medium speed. And we'll get that ellipse going. All right. Now, what would happen if this point were actually outside the circle? And here's the cool thing. We get a hyperbola.
which brings up the discussion about eccentricities again. Eccentricity less than 1, ellipse, eccentricity 0, a circle, greater than 1, hyperbola, equal to 1, parabola. Doesn't show it very well, though. And that's uh, how I talk about conic sections using locus and geometry sketchpad.